Hello, I'm Connor Noble, and I'll be presenting the Feedback Control Systems Term Project for Group 16. This is our magnetic levitator. I'm going to turn things over to Chris to talk about poles. Hey, I'm Chris, and to find our poles, we first had to develop an open loop transfer function, which you can see right here. And from this transfer function, we knew that there were going to be poles at plus and minus K1 over M. And uh, after this, we kind of decided to do PD control to bring the pole in the right-hand plane over to the left-hand plane to decrease stability. And from that, we were able to derive a closed loop transfer function, which can be seen right here. From this function, we used Ralph Huris to kind of find the initial conditions of this transfer function and kind of give us an idea of what the coefficients would be to make the process stable. In order to move the pole that was in the right-hand plane to the left-hand plane, we used uh, Ziegler-Nichols, which is one of the most popular loop tuning methods. And this method basically involves setting all your control values equal to zero, and then taking the KP control and, in and increasing it by small increments until you get a steady oscillation in the system. As you can see from the graph right here, this was the most steady oscillation we were able to achieve in our system. So we tried to pick a couple peaks that were in line and seemed to be the most steady. We went from this peak to this peak and we're able to find a period of 0 0.339 seconds. And from here, we're able to find the coefficients of our KP and KD values. One. Now I'm gonna turn it back over to Connor so he can explain the components of the levitator and the software that controls it. The most difficult part of this project from a hardware standpoint was finding a way to control the electromagnet using the Arduino because the Arduino's output voltage is only 5 volts and we needed about 12 volts flowing through the electromagnet to provide enough current to provide a strong enough electric field to lift our levitated object. We accomplished this by using a uh, in-channel MOSFET. What this does is it basically basically acts like a switch and will turn on and off when the uh, Arduino applies 5 volts to the gate of the MOSFET. To further explain my setup for the solenoid driver, we're going to turn to the circuit diagram. As you can see here, I have the 3-pin uh, pulse wave modulation output connected to the MOSFET. The pulse modulation is important because this is how the Arduino um, outputs a digital signal to represent an analog uh, output. This pulse wave modulation is basically the Arduino turning on and off that five volts of current to the, uh, the MOSFET here very quickly. This will allow us to control the position of our levitated object by uh, basically turning on and off the magnet, which will turn on and off the magnetic force that is acting on the object. Another important part of this project from a hardware standpoint was selecting the correct components. We selected this specific type of MOSFET because it is a logic level MOSFET. That means that it will allow current from the uh, source pin to the drain pin when only five volts is applied to the gate. This is important because a lot of other MOSFETs only allow all of the current to flow from the source to the drain when there is a higher voltage uh, applied to the gate. This is important because the Arduino only outputs five volts, which is standard for most digital controllers. Um, for our voltage source, we decided to use a DC um, power source that was located in the fab lab. We decided to use this power source because it'd be very easy to change our uh, voltage and also limit the current that was coming out of the power source. Uh, so we made sure we didn't burn any of our components or fry our Arduino. All right, so for the drain side of the MOSFET, we have a diode connected across our electric electromagnet. We did this so that the diode can stop the electromagnet from surging the, uh, the MOSFET and the uh, Arduino when it is turned off because when electromagnets turn off the magnetic field collapses and is converted into a very high reverse voltage go so right here you can see we have the anode of the diode connected to the positive terminal here of the bus that we had our power source connected to this is important because the flow cannot come the other way through to our arduino and if it was reversed it wouldn't be able to flow the other way so the circuit wouldn't function now I'm going to discuss the star of our show, the electromagnet. 
Uh, this electromagnet was produced using magnetic wire that was wrapped around a quarter inch screw. Uh, this was done using a drill and we just kind of tightened the, uh, the threaded section of the bolt into the chuck of the drill and just wound the, the magnetic wire around it. So we chose to wrap our solenoid in tape to protect the winding from transport and just use. Um, for our base here, we chose to just use PVC pipe and fittings. This is because it's really light and just super easy to move. So this concludes the uh, driver section of our presentation. Now I'm going to move over to sensors. To determine the location of our levitated object in relation to our electromagnet, we decided to use Hall effect sensors. Um, we use linear Hall effect sensors because uh, digital Hall effect sensors just report an on-off value, whereas a linear Hall effect sensor will actually give you a value according to how far the magnet is away from the sensor. All right, so from this diagram, you can see that we connected the Hall sensors in parallel to the uh, five volt source that was going into the VCC prong of our Hall sensor. Um, they're also grounded in parallel. You can see this is going to the ground pin of the Hall sensor. And this is the um, actual um, data kind of port pin of the Hall sensor. This goes to analog read one and analog read two. So this is how we actually get our data out of the um, Hall sensor. To further explain the Hall sensor wiring, here is a picture of a Hall sensor. The uh, first pin here is the input power supply, the second one here is the ground, and the third one here is the output. This is actually the important um, pin that you want your um, data coming from. This, this uh, diagram is very important because if you have the ground on the third pin, and you were running five volts through it, you will actually fry the hall sensor. And we did that a couple of times during this project and I definitely got burned. To further discuss how we actually used our hall sensors, I'm gonna turn it over to Chris. The biggest issue we faced with using the hall sensor was that the magnetic field from the solenoid rapidly turning on and off is detected by the hall sensor at the same time as the hall sensor is trying to sense the position of our object being levitated. To overcome this interference, we use two Hall sensors placed an equal distance away from the solenoid. The Hall sensor that is placed on the side of the electromagnet is facing 90 degrees away from the Hall sensor that's placing on the bottom. This is done because Hall sensors can only read magnetic fields that are either in front or directly behind them. All of this is done because the side Hall sensor value will be subtracted from the bottom Hall sensor value to eliminate the interference caused by the electromagnet, and this will show in our program. Our side hall sensor is placed right here, and the bottom hall sensor is placed directly on the bottom of the solenoid. Both of them have a small blank of plywood placed in between them to get the same distance from the magnetic solenoid. Now that we're done discussing the sensor, Connor is going to explain our program. Now that we have discussed both the uh, theory of our project, the driver that is going to power our electromagnet, and the sensors that are gonna provide us with the position data of our magnet. We're gonna go over the most difficult part of this project, which is actually making our object levitate using software. Uh, so to control our object's levitation, I created a PD control in uh, Arduino. For this program, it's actually a PID control, but we actually set the KI term here to zero, so this functionally makes it a PD control. Um, we obtained these KP and KD values using Ziegler Nichols, and basically this is the body of the code that will run our actual um, PID control. And this is uh, this begins communication fr from our Arduino to our computer. This allows us to have a plot of the uh, values of both Hall sensors uh, over time. A difficult part of this project was trying to find the position of our, our our levitated object in relation to the electromagnet during the during like the running of the program, so we could actually see like where the set point should be and if the um, electromagnet was actually pulling too hard or too softly at that point. 
This was difficult because when I first used just the serial print function here, it was printing out every loop and it was giving my computer too much information to handle at once and it was crashing. So to solve this, what we did was use a global integer i, which was defined up at the top of the program. And we basically said every time i equals uh, four or 250 to print once. So every time this program runs, it counts how many times it runs. So it only prints every fourth or fifth time or whatever number we want times per second. And this doesn't actually interfere with how long it takes to run this loop. All right, here is the video that we obtained using this code with the control coefficients that we attained using Ziegler Nichols. So obviously we did not achieve our desired result, which was stable levitation for 10 seconds. You can see that we did get some partial levitation and maybe for less than half a second there it was levitating on its own. But with these values that we had in our program, we had spent probably 20 hours tuning it. Um, and this is probably the best we could get it over the entire time. So let's go and do a few, a few ways we can make this project better in the future. So three ways that we can improve our project were um, finding a, a object with a larger mass to levitate. As you can see here, these neodymium magnets are pretty small. And while they're very strong, they um, oscillate a lot in the magnetic field of the electromagnets. They don't have a lot of mass, so their inertia is quite small. Um, another way we could improve this project was by purchasing better hall sensors. The hall sensors we had had to be constantly adjusted and recalibrated to give reliable values. And the third way we could improve our project was with a more efficient electromagnet. Our, mag our electromagnet ran quite hot, and after maybe five or 10 minutes of tuning, you'd have to turn it off for about five or 10 minutes because it would be too hot to work with. And this would reduce our amount of time that we could actually tune the magnet for. Although we did not achieve our desired goal in this project, we did learn a lot about PID control and its applications.